So this is the second video on A-level PE in use of technology for data. If you've not seen the first one, I'd go and check that one out first because it links well with this one. This one's going to focus more on motion analysis and indirect calorimetry. And again, we'll link that to the data. So the first thing we'll look at is video motion analysis. Now it might be worth going and finding a little demonstration video of how they do that, but essentially they put little light receptors where your joints are and they video you doing different movements. So we've got in the top left corner, a runner and they're analyzing his running gait, his stride, his posture. It might be he's coming back from injury. So it's trying to see if he's back to running in the normal way he was before his injury. And they'll video that and they can put that into a computer diagram like we see on the top right corner. And that's analyzing someone who's doing a cricket bowling and those light receptors turn it into a 3D kind of computer image program and they can break it down into skeleton and they can look at the joints and they can add, uh, measure like the angles of the joints and flexion, extension, etc., to see if there are any errors. So that's sort of how it works and what the results are. So the person analyzes the sensors. They are filmed often in a lab, but it can be done on a track. You can film someone like on a track or possibly on a pitch doing certain exercises, but it's not as controlled as a lab. It can help athletes improve their technique or power because it can see how they're using their limbs. Are they maximizing the levers that they've got and the muscles that they've got to generate power through their technique, such as jumping, running, uh, cricket bowling in the top corner there. It also helps performers who recover from injury. So they'll often be filmed while they're fit. And if they get injured as they come back and they think they're not quite ready or they're developing maybe a flaw after injury, they can be analysed how they're doing compared to when they were performing before. It can even be used to help avoid injuries occurring. They might be able to spot in these motion analysis where too much stress is being put on the body. This links really well to the biomechanics section that you do during your physiology section as well. So notational match analysis. Now this top left, we've got something you probably see more and more now. It's called a heat map. And that's a heat map of a match that Lionel Messi played in. And it shows where he was for the majority of the time on the pitch. The darker the red, the longer he was in that area for, or the more amount of time he was in that area for. You can actually see in the corners that he used to take corners in this match, because uh, the little red spots right in the corners. So you can see that's the attacking half in the right and he was there more than the defensive half. This collects quantitative data. And again, this is in the other video. It's a factual form of data. It's hard evidence. And it's focused on maybe one or two things. It can be collected using factual data fields, GPS tracking, and companies like Prozone and Optostat specialize in this notational ma uh, match analysis. And it could be anything from completed passes to whereabouts someone touched the ball on the pitch, how many times they touched the ball on the pitch within five meters of the penalty area. So it really goes into detail, but it's fact-based data fields. Performance analysis is seen as crucial now. So all of this is part of that performance analysis. So is that video motion analysis to help sports people gain a slight advantage. So the use of data, video tracking, and using past performances can help and are used when preparing for the season or for the next match, then maybe analyze when they played the team that's coming up to play them, or a boxer might analyze their opponent in their last few fights or against a boxer of similar height to see where their weaknesses are. Okay, so indirect calorimetry. So indirect calorimetry measures the amount of energy that you expend. So it's trying to find out essentially how many calories you're burning. And if you can work out how many calories you're burning during exercise, you can sort of get your nutrition and your calorie intake correct. So you're not going to put on too much weight or you're not going to start losing weight if you get that wrong. Elite sports people train so hard the right amount of calories is crucial. 
So for sports, this can be tested and we use a metabolic cart, which we're going to look at in a minute. And it gives them an energy reading and it helps guide them with their nutrition. Really useful endurance athletes. The last thing an endurance athlete wants to do is not have enough calories. But they also don't want to put lots of weight on or body fat. They want to stay at an optimum weight and consume the right amount of calories ready for an event. Didn't have the right amount of calories, their performance would drop in the competition. If they ate too much food leading up to a competition, they'd have too much body fat and they'd be slower. Metabolic cut. So the metabolic cut measures how much oxygen you're uptaking and CO2 that you're producing. And originally it was kind of built to study patients in hospital who were there for long periods of time so they could feed them the right amount of food depending on their metabolic rate while they were just lying down in, in hospital, um, hopefully improving their condition. So they use these metabolic carts to measure that. Now sports people can use these to measure how much energy they're expending during certain kind of exercises so they know roughly how much um, calories and energy they're going to need for an event or leading up to an event. And it measures how much oxygen you're consuming and how much CO2 you're producing. The positives of this metabolic car are, it helps predict energy and nutrition requirements for training and performing to reduce the chance of under or overeating. So it really gives the performer a realistic opportunity to know how much to eat. There are some negatives with this though. It can be inaccurate if there are kind of faults in the machinery or it's not set up correctly or there are leaks of gas between where the performer inhales and exhales or if there's holes in the pipe. That will give you a poor gas reading and inaccurate measures. Can lead to over under eating if the results are flawed. So it can kind of become a bit of a, a problem for the performer if it's not inaccurate needs to be done regularly to build up kind of a, a knowledge of how much this person would need. If it's just done once, that doesn't give you the, the performer a range. They need it to be done quite regularly. And it measures consumption of calories, so how many calories he's actually expending during the exercise, not how many calories you need to put in your body ready for that exercise. So it kind of doesn't give a hundred percent accuracy thanks for watching today i hope you enjoyed it again go and check the other videos out if you haven't already good luck